We will now look at line spectra uh, for hydrogen in particular by considering the spectrum of sunlight as well as spectra seen from hydrogen gas. This will really give us insight that we need in order to go further with our models of the atom. And we'll look in particular at the so-called Rydberg formula. So to start, let's consider the Sun. This is uh, one of about 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. It's mainly made up of hydrogen um, as well as helium um, because effectively it's doing nuclear fusion, converting hydrogen into helium. It's absolutely colossal, as you can see here, in comparison to the planets in our solar system. If we consider the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation that is emitted from the Sun, we see that it behaves like what we call a black body. So a black body is an object that perfectly absorbs as well as emits electromagnetic radiation. So Planck's law for a black body is given by this black line here for a temperature corresponding roughly to the temperature of the surface of the Sun, about 6000 Kelvin. And we can see here the spectrum of sunlight matches quite well. Also, it's worth noting here that there are some uh, gaps in the spectrum. There are reductions in the amount of emitted, uh, detected light um, in those regions of the spectrum. So, for example, in the visible region here, we've got a couple of gaps. So, to look closely at that, um, we could do what Fraunhofer did. He used a prism, such as one like this, where he took sunlight, which we're going to call white light here, in other words, considering effectively all the frequencies, all the visible uh, colours in, in the sun spectrum. So white light was passed through a prism, and a prism is going to refract each frequency, each wavelength differently, which effectively separates out the constituent frequencies in the light. And so that's why you get all the different colours revealed when you use a prism in this way. And this is what we call a spectrum, a bit like the black body spectrum we just looked at. We're interested in the intensity of each type of electromagnetic radiation, and we're going to compare that intensity as a function of wavelength or frequency. So, as mentioned, Fraunhofer in, the, in 1814 um, actually looked at um, the sun's spectrum and he noticed that some frequencies were reduced in the sun's spectrum. And so it looked like a very discrete set of particular lines were not as present as other wavelengths were in the sun's spectrum. So that's on the one hand, looking at um, the kind of reduced components in the sun's spectrum. On the other hand, we can look directly at gases through gas discharge tubes. And what I'm showing here is an example of uh, the kind of colours of light that are seen emitted from different gases when you apply a high voltage across these tubes. And I draw your attention in particular to the example on the left-hand side here, hydrogen gas, where we see a particular characteristic set of emission um, radiation, a particular visible light here. So if we look closely at the spectrum of emitted light from hydrogen when placed in one of these gas discharge, discharge tubes, basically it's a high voltage with the hydrogen gas inside, then we notice we don't get a continuous range of frequencies of light, rather we get these discrete spectra. In other words, particular, very particular choices of wavelength or frequency that are seen. And we notice here that there are different names for these various uh, series of spectral lines that are seen from hydrogen. So on the one hand, we've got the sun spectrum revealing reduced, um, reduced intensity in certain, at certain wavelengths. And on the other hand, we've got hydrogen demonstrating emission of um, wavelengths, of particular wavelengths. Now, if we look at that absorption spectrum, for example, um, the kind of reductions that we see in the sunlight's uh, spectrum. And if we look at the absorption of hydrogen, where we just pass white light through hydrogen and see which wavelengths are kind of removed or reduced uh, when we detect uh, the spectrum on the other side, having transmitted white light through hydrogen gas, we see indeed, just like with the sunlight case, we see that there are missing 
lines, or rather not missing, but at least reduced. Um, and so these are called absorption lines, and it's really interesting to note that those absorption lines line up pretty much exactly with the emission spectrum. So this first case here, the absorption spectrum, that is analogous to the kind of Fraunhofer lines where we saw that there were reduced components in the sun's spectrum when we put it through a prism. And in this case here with the hydrogen emission spectrum, when we just isolate hydrogen gas and put a high voltage across it, then we see these characteristic wavelengths being given off. So there's this very clear correspondence between absorption and emission line spectra. And of course, it's worth just re-emphasizing again that of course the sun has a huge amount of hydrogen in it, certainly in its atmosphere, and that explains why some of the sun's black body radiation is absorbed uh, because of the presence of hydrogen in the sun's atmosphere. And also just point out here that these absorption spectra can often be used in astronomy to infer the composition of distant stars or what makes up an atmosphere in a planet, for example. Okay, so focusing again just on hydrogen, um, in 1885, Barmer found a formula that could nicely describe the particular wavelengths that we find in this uh, visible part of the hydrogen light spectrum. In other words, these four particular visible wavelengths that are given off. It's just given by this very simple formula here, where the reciprocal of the emitted wavelength is just given by this constant. We'll see in a moment that constant is called the Rydberg constant, constant, and it's just multiplied by this difference of uh, squared fractions. Basically, n here is an integer greater than or equal to 3. So in other words, if it was 3, for example, this would be 1 over 9. 1 over 2 squared is 1 over 4. So the right-hand fraction is smaller, so this component is positive, which is what we'd expect because we want a positive wavelength on the left-hand side there. And so if you plug in values of n, uh, 3, 4, 5, and so on, then you get particular wavelengths which correspond to the wavelengths we see in the Barmer series. Okay, the point though here is that this was done empirically, kind of by trial and error, if you like. There, there's no uh, physics behind this description here. It just fits the data. Others did uh, a similar thing with other components to the hydrogen line spectrum. So the Lyman series, that's for ultraviolet emission lines that are seen from hydrogen. And we get a different formula here, where now n can take on a value of 2 or greater as an integer. And that explains the uh, ultraviolet emission lines from hydrogen. The Passion series is similar. That gives us um, the emission lines in the infrared part of the hydrogen emission line spectra. And so here we've got a, a larger uh, first uh, integer, that'd be 3 squared there. So therefore this integer needs to be chosen such that this right-hand fraction is going to be smaller than 1 over 9 to describe the series of lines in the infrared part of the hydrogen spectrum. And in fact, there are a whole number of different spectra, different series, if you like, that can be found for hydrogen. I'm listing some of them here, Lyman, Barmer, Passion, Brackett, and others. And you can see that we can come up with a very similar formula for all of them. And that was where Rydberg put together this kind of general description for all of the hydrogen emission lines given by this following formula, where we have now the Rydberg constant here, and we just have this difference of these fractions squared, where we have the smaller integer on the left-hand side here and the larger integer on the right-hand side here, such that when you do the reciprocal and you do the squaring, um, this is always a positive component, which gives a positive wavelength, predicting nicely, or rather not predicting, but actually fitting empirically the data that are observed. Unfortunately, though, with no physical explanation as to why that is. So in summary, um, the hydrogen spectrum um, was very much studied in the 19th century, um, and that was, of course, due to the sun um, and the Fraunhofer lines that we've looked at. But then also there were these emission spectra from hydrogen gas, for example, and that's where the Rydberg formula came in um, to empirically uh, describe the data. But of course, it, it, well not of course, but it just didn't give any physical meaning behind these line spectra. So the value of R, the Rydberg constant, was fitted, 
but its fundamental explanation was not known. And this really now opened the door for a very remarkable model that was put forward for the atom by Niels Bohr. And we'll consider the Bohr model of the atom in the next video. And it remarkably can come up with a value for the Rydberg constant that, that very much fits um, the empirical data with remarkable precision and accuracy. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we'll get on to the Bohr model of the atom. Thank you.